Well, this week we're doing motion sensors, and of course, uh, just like with the other sensors we've looked at, these will work on any kind of railroad, especially these kind of sensors, because they don't even have anything to do with the trains. Now, last week we were looking at infrared sensors, uh, and this is typically what you will use to detect the position of a train, and they, you can use that to trigger a crossing or some kind of signaling or any other uh, number of devices, but things where you want to detect the position of the train. And on a model railroad, of course, that's typically what you're most interested in is triggering different animated uh, features and sound features uh, based on uh, the location of the train, letting the train trigger the device. But sometimes you would rather things be triggered by the position of a human being, somebody that's actually operating the train, so that when somebody approaches the railroad, that triggers the device. This is especially true on like a big club railroad or a railroad where you're doing a lot of operating and switching and that sort of thing. You might not want to have all of your sound features, for example, running all the time. But if somebody's switching a particular industry, when that person approaches the industry, then you want the animation and sound features for that industry to come on. And then when that person moves away, to have that shut off. Hey. <laughs> now, on our railroad, we have all of the various features just on switches uh, because I kind of like having everything turned on all at once. Uh, it's just funner that way, I think. It's just nice to be able to walk around and see everything operating and hear all of the various soundtracks running. The key with that is not having your individual sounds turned up to the point where it just becomes a cacophony of random sounds in the room and you can't tell what's going on to have the sounds quiet enough that you're really only aware of them when you approach the the feature. So let's take a look at some of these motion detectors. They fall into several categories based on how exactly they work. Most of them are infrared detectors. There's a there's a photo cell in there but it's tuned to body heat. So when a person approaches it, it detects the heat of that person's body and that triggers it. This is absolutely the most common type of uh, motion detector. Uh, really, it's more of a human being detector when working indoors. They'd be confused by sunlight if you took them outside. They'd see nothing but blinding heat everywhere and they wouldn't work at all. So I guess if you're uh, looking to put a motion sensor on your, say, garden railroad, this would be, this would be right out. So this is a sensor that you could use outside. It's a more complicated sensor, still readily available for very little money. But this is what you'll see used on security lights and, and that kind of thing. They work just exactly like radar. Uh, some of them emit ultrasonic uh, sound waves. And then they look for a reflection coming back. And within that reflection, they're looking for a Doppler shift to determine if something out there is moving around. Some of them work exactly like radar. They transmit microwaves. And then they look for a reflection coming back from that and look for Doppler shift there to detect motion. Anyway, what we're likely to use on a model railroad would be the infrared sensor. And the upside there is they're incredibly simple to use, readily available and incredibly easy to, to hook up. Most of them run on either, you know, any, any voltage between 12 and 24 volts. They do require a very, very steady voltage. If the voltage fluctuates, it's going to trigger the thing. And then they're polarized. You have to make sure that you hook this up uh, uh, correctly positive and negative. The upside there being that the output is equally polarized because what these are usually being connected to are LED lighting strips or LED lights of some kind. So those have to be polarized anyway. You can see on this one where it has an input DC voltage between 12 and 24 volts 
and then an output voltage. So when it detects uh, heat, when it detects that a person has approached it, uh, it will start passing that voltage to the output. Whatever voltage is coming in will simply be passed out and it's rated at 8 amps. Now, uh, most of these say that they're to be used with LEDs, and so I'm not sure what they would think of having like an inductive load on there, like an electric motor. But then some of them will say that they work with electric motors. So if you're going to use it to control a motor, I would look for one that says that it, that it will do motors as well, because I'm not sure what the other ones would think of that. They typically have a range which is, is quite wide. They'll pick somebody, uh, pick up somebody moving toward them from as much as 12 feet away. It just sort of depends. Some are more sensitive than others. But almost all of them have a little dome like this, meaning that they're omnidirectional. Some are directional so that you can set them up in such a way that they'll only see something directly in front of them. But most of them use the little dome so that uh, they pick up motion all the way around themselves. Now this one is quite impressive. Look at that, 30 amps. But also impressive here, this one says that yes, it will in fact run motors uh, rather than just LEDs. It says it will pretty much work with anything. Here's its listing on Amazon at a whopping $9.80. So these things are not expensive and uh, they're not terribly large and easy to mount. So you can just mount this somewhere on your railroad where it would be able to detect a person walking up toward it. It also has a little timer. All of these have a little timer. Some of them are adjustable, some are not. This one can be set to any delay from 15 seconds to three minutes, meaning once the person walks away, it will continue to be triggered for that amount of time. So if you want your feature to come on immediately, it will stay on after the person walks away for that amount of time, depending on how you set this, this setting right here. So in theory, I could put one of these in the circuit with the Gardner Brothers mill, and then when somebody approached this area, the mill would turn on. When they left after a period of time, it would shut itself back off. Now, a potential problem here is that because this draws so much current, when it comes on, it could cause a drop in the voltage from the power supply. And if there were other motion sensors in that line, it might trigger those because they're sensitive to voltage drops. So you may find that you have to have a dedicated power supply for something like this. Well, I hope you're finding this series on electronics interesting and uh, would like to see more of them. If so, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe. It helps the channel and it actually helps you a lot too because it helps the, the algorithms find uh, more appropriate videos for you. So hit the, the like button and if you're not a subscriber, hit the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And Karen and I will see you here on Sunday with some fun stuff. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.